Welcome back to another Hugo tutorial. We're gonna finish off our blog now by actually creating the pages where you can read the blog posts. So where we left off the blog in the previous video, we just did a really simple homepage and we put in all of the links for the uh, the two posts that we've created. And uh, as you can see, if you click on one of the links, it takes you to uh, a slug, like a, a URL for the blog post, but there's no content there. And that's very similar to what we had with the index page initially. You need to create the templates in the Hugo theme uh, before any of the blog content will display. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this tutorial. So let's make a start. So over in Visual Studio Code, uh, we've got all the theme files that we created in the previous, previous Hugo tutorial. And what we're going to do uh, today is actually fill out this single.html file. And uh, this is gonna be what's used when you actually click one of those links from the homepage. Uh, it takes you to the single uh, template, uh, which is this, and uh, we will actually render the content uh, from the blog post, which is the uh, markdown files that we create. So uh, first things we need to do is just to define uh, what we call the main uh, section. So uh, we'll use uh, this Hugo templating uh, define keyword here, and we define the main block. And uh, you may remember from the previous tutorial that we did that on the index page as well. Uh, but just to reiterate in this uh, base of uh, template, this is the, the fundamental uh, te base template that Hugo will use to actually generate any of the pages on your site. Uh, and you can see here, that's the uh, the block main in the center of the page there. Okay, so let's go back to single.html and we're gonna start putting some stuff in there. So what kind of things do we want in there? Uh, we're going to put in a uh, section uh, which will have the article, uh, in uh, an article tag inside and all of the content. Uh, but before we do that, let's just start off with a, a div with a class of container, uh, which is a class that we created last week just to kind of bring everything into the page, uh, into the center of the page a little bit more. And then we're going to create a section tag as mentioned. And I'm just gonna give this an ID of a single article, uh, just so we can target it with some CSS later on, just for a simple bit of styling, just to demonstrate how that works. And what we're gonna put inside the single article tag or the, the section is actually uh, an article uh, HTML tag and we'll just say has an ID of article content. Uh, so you can be as specific as you want with these things uh, but this is and use whatever semantic tags that you like but this is just an example of uh, getting started. So the thing that we really want to show uh, first of all for this blog post is going to be the title uh, so we can get that with uh, again Hugo's templating uh, and just access the title property and if we just save that uh, what you might need to do when you've uh, put some content into this single page is just restart the Hugo server. Uh, but if you go back over to the site, you can see this was the title that we gave uh, this particular post, uh, which is what we've clicked through from on the home page. So that's all working okay. So let's put a bit more stuff in there that we might want to see. Uh, so we probably don't want it just as a plain bit of text here. Uh, just gonna open up a div and inside there, I will put the title, but the, I'll actually put it as a heading level one tag, because that is the actual title of the page. And then what we're going to do is just put what category uh, this post was created in, and also uh, the time when it was written, uh, which is all defined in the markdown front matter, which we looked at a little bit ago. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a div uh, with a class of category, and I'm just gonna put two spans inside of here. So two spans and the first one is just going to be a simple bit of text say posted in and then the next thing is we're going to actually get the category so the category itself uh, we can actually access from params.categories uh, I'll make sure we use the uh, templating uh, thing for Hugo there the two curly braces Oops. And uh, what you'll find is if we do that and have a look, uh, we have got the category, which is JavaScript in this particular thing, but it's kind of like an array and it's got the uh, the square brackets around it. So what we can do is actually uh, just access the first item in that array um, by using the index keyword in Hugo. So basically we're saying uh, get in the params categories array uh, the item at position zero. And we can also use pipes to uh, transform the text that's coming out of there as well. So there's loads of different things in Hugo. Uh, and one which might be useful for us uh, today is the title uh, pipe, which basically uh, means that uh, it will transform the text into title case. And as you can see there, now we've got posted in JavaScript. So all good. Uh, so the other thing I mentioned there as well is we're gonna do the time as well. So it's a little bit trickier. 
but uh, just underneath this category uh, div here, I'm going to create another one called authored uh, date. And first thing is same. I'll create a span and uh, say written on. Or it could say created on, for example. Uh, and then I'm actually going to use a time uh, tag here. Uh, so the doesn't seem to like auto completing that for us in Visual Studio. So we're going to use this time tag and use the formatting that we uh, saw in uh, the previous tutorial to format the time and date. Uh, so uh, we can access the created or authored date uh, from params.date and then we're going to say the format and then we'll just, you can use any format you like. And as mentioned last tutorial as well, you need to kind of specify the uh, kind of string of how you would like the date to appear uh, for that format function to work. Um, but what we can actually do as well, uh, which is a nice thing for the, uh, the time tag, we can specify the date time property, which uh, helps browser, uh, sorry, search engines understand a little bit more about when this uh, time tag is referring to. So again, we'll use, uh, oops, params dot date dot format, uh, and this time, and I'll make it look a bit more like an ISO string. So uh, make sure I get this correct here. So, if I... okay, so the format now for this date time property will be uh, more like an ISO string. And again, that'll just help us uh, search engine crawlers and so forth just to understand when this article is written. Uh, so if we go back and have a look at the site, so we've got posted in JavaScript written on this particular date. Okay, so that's sort of some meta information about the uh, page. How do we actually get the content that was inside the markdown file? Uh, and just to remind you, it's up here for a new post. So we've got uh, the new post, the heading, uh, and also this lorem ipsum text that I've added in there. So we want to get that and actually display it on the page. Uh, and that's pretty simple uh, within our template. I'm just going to put a head, uh, horizontal rule there just to separate the metadata at the top there. And uh, I'm just going to create a div. And inside that, we just want to access the content property. And doing that, if we go back over to the site, you can see all of that content from the markdown file is being parsed into HTML and then put into the page for us. Uh, so that's uh, pretty, pretty simple just to get the content from there. So anything above the front matter in the markdown file uh, will be inside there. But we can do some other cool things as well uh, once we've got the content on the page. Uh, we've got tags associated with this particular uh, markdown file. Uh, so what we can do is if there are tags, because there might not be, uh, we'll use the with params.tags and if there are any tags what we'll do is we'll just create an unordered list give it an ID of tags and then we can use this range property a uh, bit similar to how we used the index property above uh, but we just basically say uh, for each of the uh, tags that are available in that array uh, we can loop through each of them and uh, we'll create a list item for each of them uh, which is basically an anchor tag. So for the anchor tag, we want to actually send it to a tags page on our site uh, so that it will display all of the content and all of the blog posts that match this particular tag. Uh, so to do that, we do a bit of templating in Hugo here. And we'll say, well, I'm going to send you to tags and we'll just make sure that's an absolute URL. And then after that, it's forward slash. And then the dot in this case will refer to the actual uh, tag that we're talking about. So it'll be JavaScript, for example. And then we just pass it into this other pipe of URL eyes, just to make sure that it uh, comes out as a URL uh, in this href property. And then the only other thing that we need in there is the actual tag name itself, which again is represented by this dot uh, to be put inside the anchor tag so you can actually see it. Uh, so if we save that and go and have a look at the page, uh, you can see we've got a couple of things here. Uh, so this particular post must have had two tags for JavaScript and tutorial and uh, clicking on those would normally take you to the tags page. But again, we haven't implemented uh, that templating uh, page yet uh, either. OK, so uh, that's tags that you can put onto the bottom of your page. What also uh, is quite nice and something that you would see regularly on blogs is maybe some suggested articles. Uh, so you could read other articles in this particular category. Uh, and that's something that we can also do as well. So I'm just going to, before we close off the section uh, after the article, I'm just going to create a, an aside tag uh, with an ID of meta. 
and then just inside there put a little span saying uh, you might be interested in and then inside here we can refer to other posts that are inside of the category and we can do that in one of two ways we can say uh, with prev in section there's also a similar thing for with uh, next in section as well so this will just uh, give us links to uh, pages or, or sorry blog posts that are inside this category either before or after this particular one that's being displayed uh, so we need to put some stuff inside of here luckily it's quite it's exactly the same thing for each one so we'll put in a div and i'll just put a heading level three tag in here uh, which has an anchor tag and it's basically a reference to the permalink uh, which is referring to the previous blog post that's in this category okay so we'll do that and just put the uh, title inside of there and then exactly the same thing for the next in section as well uh, so we'll just save that and we should find now if we go to the other page uh, back to the web page now I've got this section at the bottom of the page so you might be interested in other posts and uh, this one's coming up it's the only other blog post on the actual uh, site at the moment anyway uh, but it must be matching one of the categories uh, such as JavaScript for this because uh, that's the only category that this one's matching in so if we go to that hello world you can see this has also got the same post it's still JavaScript as well uh, and it's doing the same thing it's saying you might be interested in this uh, other post as well because they're in the same category uh, so that's how you go about creating a single page I'm just going to pop in some CSS I'm just going to copy and paste it in just to make this look a little bit better uh, but let's go into main CSS and so just a few rules in here just to kind of demonstrate the different sections that we've created today uh, so we've got the title uh, the meta information here and then all of the content and then some tags and then finally the alternative uh, posts that uh, match this section as well so that's how you go about creating a single page in Hugo and as mentioned that's for reading the individual blog posts that you create and the same principle applies to any other parts of the templating system with Hugo so we, if you want to create the tags page for example you would literally just create the template files the HTML files and put the content of what you want in there uh, and that will start rendering those pages as well so we've covered lots of things with creating templates and making themes with Hugo and we're going to start wrapping up our our series on Hugo uh, by creating a process for building your Hugo site and then finally deploying it to a web server or GitHub pages uh, so that you can then view that stuff online as well. Uh, but that's it for this tutorial. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.